Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the call. Welcome to the podcast. Today is May 11th. Let's see, it's 12.18 in the afternoon. I'm having my fifth Nespresso. And I'm going to talk about government benefits because there's a lot of confusion out there. So I'm going to start off uh, talking about um, unemployment, because that's the one that most people are going to be able to get, and um, it's the easiest to get, and um, there seems to be some confusion about it. So let me start off with saying, if you're in California, um, you'll notice when you go to the uh, the website, where you got to go to the website to apply, that it says certifying for weeks ending March 14th through May 9th. Uh, you don't need to certify. Now, this may be true in other states as well. Basically, what the what the state is saying is that we get it. We get that COVID-19 has, you know, just wreaked havoc. So we don't expect you to be able to find a job because nobody's finding jobs during that time. So you don't need to certify. So... Um, I think that's great. That's great. Now, what I did is I still went through and I certified, but I did not put any any job searching. So I do recommend you do that. Don't just um, skip those weeks. Um, go and give them a check off uh, because that seems to speed up the process. I don't have any scientific proof of that, but it did seem that once I went through and I certified for all the weeks that I could, that money then showed up in my account. Now, the other thing that's interesting is um, in California, a lot of people still have not gotten their debit cards. So we applied almost two weeks ago on the 28th of, of April, and the debit cards uh, were not mailed out until the 1st, which was a week ago last Friday. And I know this because I called Bank of America, and you can put in your, um, your social security number and, and they will tell you exactly when your card was uh, sent out. And I did that, and it said it was sent out on the 1st, and I should expect it early this week. So um, I know somebody got theirs last Thursday the 7th, uh, somebody who lived in Sebastopol, California. I have not received mine yet. I'm hoping it's going to be in the mail today. So... That's just a little, uh, little bit of uh, information about um, California. Each state is different, okay? For example, I'm seeing here frustration grows as about 60,000 Oregonians still wait for unemployment checks. And this was as of Wednesday of last week. Um, new Maryland unemployment claims will be paid this week, all right? So that's the story there. And then in a state like Illinois, um, they're putting everything off until this week, right? That you can actually apply, apply this week. So while in California, we were able to apply two weeks ago, and in Louisiana, you could apply weeks before that, Illinois seems to be one of the, the late later to the game states. And their portal is supposed to launch today, um, which is, which is uh, May 11th, Monday, May 11th. All right. So my recommendation is that you stay as close as you can to your uh, website, your state's website, 
to uh, stay up to date. Now, a lot of us in California, we also got a letter in the mail. <clears throat> I got a letter that was mailed on 5-5, which was uh, last Tuesday, which basically told me um, how much money um, I was going to get in total and then what my weekly amount was. And for everybody, the weekly amount is 167 to start out. And then um, on top of that, uh, for the months of April, May, June, and July, you're going to get an extra $600 per week. If you're in California and you want to know the number to call to find out about your debit card, that number is 866-692-9374. 866-692-9374. And uh, you can find out where your card is. Now, this is also very interesting. Um, so when I applied, you know, they came back and said, um, I applied, you know, like two months ago. They said that um, they couldn't determine if I was a, an employee or not. So um, somebody from the EDD called me and asked me a whole lot of questions about, you know, how I how it was working with Lyft. And what I got uh, was an investigation response and it says, claimant provided services as a driver and was determined to be a common law employee. So I found that pretty interesting, um, that I was determined to be a common law employee, which means if I did get uh, you know, truly unemployed by Uber, Uber or Lyft, um, I would be entitled to unemployment benefits. I don't know who would pay for it, um, but um, that's why uh, Uber and Lyft are getting sued by the state of California because they feel, the state feels that they have mis misclassified all the drivers and uh, they want them to, to uh, start paying for some of this um, unemployment uh, benefit. Interesting, yeah? Okay. Now, let's talk about the EIDL. So the EIDL is the, uh, for most of us, it's a $1,000 deposit into our bank account. So if you applied now three to four months, three to four weeks ago, um, you're, you're like in a queue. And it seems like a lot of people last week got $1,000 deposited into their bank accounts. Um, I looked at some comments from uh, one of the videos I did. Um, guess what? My friend just got my grand from the EIDL. Thank you. God bless. That was from someone named Cirrus. And... Um, you know, we, we're, we've been hearing a lot of people have been able to get that $1,000 deposited into their account. So uh, you can't apply for it now. Right now, the only people that can apply are people that are in the agriculture business. So if you didn't apply, there's nothing you can do about it. But if you did apply and you haven't gotten it yet, there's still a chance you're going to get. Um, it's $1,000 per employee. And for most of us, we're the only employee. So we got $1,000, right? I know somebody that put, she had two employees. Um, herself and one other person, and she got $2,000. So good for her. Okay. And then the last program is called the PPP, Paycheck Protection Program. And this one has been very interesting because um, I applied last month and um, I was notified that I was partially approved and that it was going to an underwriter. And then nothing happened uh, for two weeks. So I sent a little email and I said, hey, customer service at a company called Lendio. I said, what's up? It's been two weeks. I also said, I've been promoting your company and <laughs> you've gotten like 100,000 views. So um, could you, you know, just take a look at what's going on? And I just got a generic response that, you know, it's very, very busy and things are just taking longer than they thought. And then last week on Thursday, I was sent a document, a DocuSign document which basically were my loan papers that I needed to sign. Um, and I was asking for um, 8,000 a month for two and a half months, so $20,000. And uh, so I signed all, all those documents on Thursday night. And I'm waiting to see when they can put the funds into my bank account, because I'm not counting on anything until the money's in my bank account. So, so the other thing I want to share with you, so that was through a company called Lendio. Uh, but I got an interesting uh, email from someone, uh, one of our readers, and he said that he applied for a, a PPP loan through Square. Okay, so if you Google Square, uh, do Square PPP application. 
He said he applied in the morning, he got accepted by the end of the day, and the next day he had money in his bank account. So, you know, that would be the direction I would go if you have not applied yet, um, or if you have applied and you're not getting any response, go to Square, S-Q-U-A-R-E, and do PPP uh, loan application and apply there. Because this uh, this guy, he sent me, like we went back and forth with three or four emails. And uh, yeah, he said it was amazing how fast and smooth it was. And uh, boom, he got the money put into his bank account within 24 hours. Whereas I, I applied almost a month ago and I still don't have any money in my bank account. So I'm not going to recommend Lendio right now. I'm going to recommend Square. And if you're listening to this and you've not applied or or you applied and you're not getting any results, go to Square and apply there. It takes about an hour. You know, you got to put some pa- pull, put some paperwork together. But, you know, for a what? This guy got $10,000. i am trying to get $20,000. 100% forgivable uh, if you, as long as you pay yourself. Um, that's a that's a good hour's worth of worth of your time, good value for your time, right? Okay. The other thing, um, so so where so let's take let's slow down here and take stock in, in where we're at. So this thing happened for me starting February third. So on February third, that was my last day of driving, and as of today, all I have received from our government is. $1,200, and that was the stimulus check, all right? That came back on the 24th of, uh, of April, and I received $1,000, which was the EIDL money, and that came last Monday, last Monday, so a week ago. That's it. That's it. Now, I'm entitled to, according to the state, another $5,000, in unemployment uh, benefits, but I don't have access to that money yet because I haven't gotten this debit card. And even once I get the debit card, it's going to take another three days for, to transfer the money from the unemployment uh, fund to my bank account. So if I get it today, then the money will be in my bank account by the end of the week. And I've got this 20000 floating out there, which if I get it, I should get it this week. And then I'm going to have to make some decisions about how I'm going to negotiate getting both a loan uh, for my company, for my driving company, and getting unemployment insurance. Okay, so um, I'll share with you how I how I maneuver that once I get I have that bridge to cross. All right. So that's kind of the latest. That's kind of where we're at right now with all the different programs. So I hope you found this uh, information valuable. I highly recommend you stay close to our YouTube channel because um, whenever there's anything that's going on, um, that's where I go first. And uh, that's very timely. These podcasts I record usually a a week to a week and a half in advance. Um, So what you're hearing, what you're hearing today for you will be Monday uh, the 18th, but I'm actually recording it today the 11th. So it's always a a week to a week and a half uh, delayed. So uh, get to the YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and turn on notifications because we're also doing these uh, YouTube Lives, which you can check out as well. All right? All right, all right, all right. Let's see, what kind of what, what are we playing on the music here? Ah. Yeah, so there's a... If you go... Um, that's the Rolling Stones doing a song called Shattered. I'm just kind of playing in the background. But uh, yesterday, this is completely off topic, but I'll share this with you. Um, I was on Instagram, right? And I follow the Rolling Stones. And they said there was uh, there were some new fresh licks, fresh licks on YouTube. So if you go to uh, YouTube and you put in uh, Rolling Stones fresh licks, um, there's a half an hour of a performance they did in South America, which was awesome. If you're a Stones fan, this is something you got to see. I mean, it's like tears in your eyes. Uh, What what did they? What songs did they do? They did uh, like two songs from Exile on Main Street, um, Tumbling Dice, and all all down the line. And then they did uh, Miss You, a really extended version of Miss You. And then they finished uh, with Start Me Up. And uh, they were in good form, 
good recording, you know, good camera angles, good, you know, you can watch some guitar playing and Mick doing his thing. It was pretty, pretty awesome. And then today, um, let me see, if I go to my Instagram feed, um, Bruce Springsteen has a bunch of his concerts available on YouTube. Um, so that's pretty great <laughs> if you're a Bruce Springsteen fan. Um, it shows like five different concerts that you can go and watch um, on YouTube. So it's kind of cool that some of these uh, musicians are making some of the stuff that you would normally pay for available because they realize we're all at home and uh, this is the new normal. So if you're into the Stones or Bruce Springsteen, there's some great stuff you can catch on YouTube. All right. And uh, that's about it. That's it for today. So that's a wrap. All right. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it every day. I honor you. If you got a story to tell, go to nomadj.com. Send me a message and uh, we can talk about it and bring you on to the podcast. This is Jay Crater, Nomad J, also known as Nomad J. I'm called Nomad J because I've been to 37 countries and I love to travel. I don't own a lot of possessions, but I have, I'm have. rich in experiences. And that's that's how I want to die. No regrets there. No regrets. I want to see the world. That's my top priority. All right. That's why I'm called Nomad J. This is Jay Crater saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.